the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. Now, in a series of tweets, the Muslim Council of Britain have challenged Home Secretary Suella Braverman. Ms. Braverman, Mrs. Braverman, my apologies, Mrs. Braverman says that it is anti-Semitic. It causes alarm to Jews and, says Mrs. Braverman, to all decent people. That's what she's saying. As I say, the Muslim Council of Britain have a different view. In the previous hours of the show, I was joined in the studio by Israel's ambassador to the UK, Zippy Hotovili. We covered a wide range of subjects, but what was her view on this specific chant? It's either people don't understand what they're saying or they understand and they ignore the consequences. Because from the river to the sea has only one meaning, that if you look at the map, that Israel shouldn't exist and Israel should be totally eliminated from the Middle East map. And what is not, if not ethnic cleansing of the Jewish people from their homeland? So my opinion, I, I support what uh, Home Secretary is saying. This is a chant that shouldn't be heard in the streets of London. Gideon Falter is chief executive of the campaign against anti-Semitism, joins me now. Gideon, we've spoken many times about freedoms in this country. Is it free? Am I free to do that chant? Or do you think it's anti-Semitic and, and will cause alarm? Morning, Gideon. Good morning, Nick. Um, I think this is an easy one in many ways. You've just got to ask which river and which sea are we talking about? And of course, the obvious answer is the River Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea, in which case you're talking about the entire country, the entire land uh, in which you have Israel. And so you're basically chanting a chant from the river to the sea, which basically calls for the state of Israel to be obliterated. In a way, some uh, might say it's sort of a call for a second Holocaust. And it's a chant which was actually explicitly rejected by the Palestinian Authority during the Oslo Accords um, of 1993 and thereabouts. Um, it's a call that has been rejected by Palestinian leadership. It's a call, of course, which is kept by Hamas. Um, and Hamas has in its charter, in its very founding charter, that, uh, as they put it, the final hour will not come until they kill the Jews. So I think it's very clear what the chant means and who means what by it. Um, I think, as um, we just heard in that clip there, there is there are people who say it without even thinking or understanding what it means but they need to think they need to stop and it does cause a hell of a lot well i was going to ask you gideon as, gideon as a, a jewish man and i know you're very proud of your faith and indeed you defend your faith do you mind me asking you personally were you to hear this chanted as you were walking about your business what, what would go through your mind or your heart I think particularly right now as well, you know, when we've just had the worst single anti-Semitic atrocity since the Holocaust, if I hear people shouting that, which is a genocidal chant, it absolutely chills me. It absolutely chills me that people are chanting that on the streets of the UK. And I was just reading in the Telegraph this morning about those two British Israeli sisters who've been taken hostage by Hamas. You know, this people forget. Yahala no Neuer, just to remind my listeners. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah Hal and Neuer are still, uh, you know, and they're both minors, um, 16 and 13. They're, 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 they are in captivity of Hamas without being explicit. It's very clear what Hamas considers female prisoners to be for, including female child prisoners. And... At the same time as these people, over 100 people being in brutal captivity of Hamas, we also are seeing Hamas continually firing missiles, trying to hit civilians into Israeli cities. And of course, sometimes those missiles falling short and actually hitting people in Gaza or overshooting Israel entirely because Israel is not a big country and actually hitting Palestinians on the other side of Israel um, in, in, right. in, on, the, on the other side. So... You know, hearing... Sorry, go on there. I was just going to say, I, I need to move on, but I want to ask you one final question on a, on a related issue. I understand you were at a demonstration yesterday outside the BBC uh, with others concerning the use of some of their dialogue. They still, um, I don't seem to have a problem with it, but they still sound unable to say the word terrorist. Why did you hold that demo? How successful was it? And what are you campaigning for, Gideon? I mean, you're right. You don't have a problem with it. Most right people, most right think people, uh, most right thinking people don't. Um, you know, ISIS um, is very similar to Hamas in its way of operating, um, and the BBC doesn't have a problem calling certain things terrorist attacks. It calls the London 2005 bombings terrorist attacks. Um, in fact, last night when there was that horrific terrorist attack in Brussels, they immediately called it a terror attack. 
And as soon as we tweeted them saying, why are you calling this a terror attack and not the Hamas atrocity in Israel a terror attack, they changed it and started referring it to uh, referring to it as a shooting instead of a terror attack. So it's a horrendous position for the BBC to be taking. It's contrary to what the UK thinks, the US thinks, the European Union thinks, and they need to change it because if you call terrorists anything but terrorists, you're basically excusing them. Grateful as ever for your time. Gideon Falter, thank you. Chief Executive of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. Let's come back to the chant. and bring in, as I mentioned, it's the Muslim Council of Britain that says t- challenging uh, Suella Bravan's stance on this. Pleased to welcome to the conversation Mikdad Versi, who's a spokesperson with the MCB, the Muslim Council for Britain. Uh, thank you for coming on, sir. You've heard the explanation. It effectively speaks to the obliteration of Israelis, of Jews. How do you react to that? Morning. Morning. Um, I think that's just not true in terms of what people mean on the on the march and elsewhere. Uh, the idea that it can only mean one thing is, of course, uh, a bit ridiculous. And when you actually look at what academic studies have done, if you look at the the biggest Jewish magazine in the U.S., Forward magazine, it laid out in detail what from the river to the sea could mean. And let me give you two potential meanings, which uh, are the meanings that people who I know who've used that chant before actually mean. One potential meaning is the meaning that actually from the river, from River Jordan, uh, there's West Bank, to the sea where there is the Gaza Strip, there needs to be freedom from occupation. Palestine should be free. As you'll be aware, um, Israel has been subjugating the Palestinian people in the world's longest occupation, for, and it's the world's longest. It's been for a very long time, and people want Palestine to be free. So that's one. The other, and that's the majority view from the people who I know, they believe in a two-state solution, and they believe that Palestine should be free from the river where the West Bank is to the sea where the Gaza Strip is. Now, well, the put, second, put type, crudely, second interpretation... Put crudely, where would the Israelis so, go then? Where Israel is. They believe in a two-state solution, and they say that from the river where the West Bank is but you to the sea... you wouldn't join them up then? I, I see there's two separate so enclaves. They're two, but, they're, but that's where Palestine is. Palestine, which is, uh, I mean, the state of Palestine, according to you know, but, many countries across the globe, is in the West Bank and Gaza. So West Bank and Gaza, they should be free, and that's from the river to the sea. So some but, people believe in a two-state solution. Let me just give you the second perspective, and second, if that's OK. Go, go ahead, the second, go ahead. Yep. The second perspective is that they believe, that some people believe, that actually what you need to have is a one person, one state, like South Africa, post-apartheid. So obviously Israel is, is uh, an apartheid state according to human rights organizations, South Africa, Israeli spy, spy chiefs, etc. So given that it's an uh, apartheid state, some people say... Right, from the I, may, I need to challenge, because many people challenge that it's a apartheid state, but go on with people, the main Some people you... challenge that, I agree. Yeah, okay. But most, I mean, most human rights groups uh, oh, okay. I believe it's an apartheid yeah. state. Okay, so yeah. now, if that's the case, post an apartheid state, what you want is one person, one vote. So anyone, whether you're Palestinian, whether you're Arab, whether you're Israeli, everyone has one person, one vote. The whole land should be a democratic, secular state. Now, that's what some people believe. Now, I'm not saying I agree with either of those. I'm saying that don't assume and don't attack anyone who says this as they want to obliterate Jews. Like, that's just not fair. Okay, but you, you, you sound a very reasonable fellow, but if you'll allow... Which and I read that the slogan after the 1993 Oslo Accords, which of course, as you'll recall, was signed by Israel and the PLO, the slogan was effectively dropped, and then it was taken up by Islamists, including Hamas. Why would you support that? Because you sound very reasonable. Why would you want to support that? I, I can't imagine you're a supporter of Hamas. <laughs> of course. Not. So, so I think that's a very reasonable question. I think if you were to try and actually talk about the the pain that Palestinians feel and the way that they use a term uh, on the street to try and express their pain and try and see is there a way to do it in a way that's different, you know, let's have that conversation. I'm, I'm not someone who'll say, you know, I want to hurt people or want to have, you know, those who have different views that shouldn't be th- thought through. But these are these are chants that they've had on demonstrations for decades. It's not just an Islamist chant nowadays. It's a chant that is used by many people. Now, it might have been originally by some in, in some uh, occasions, but if you look at what, what, what has been written on the topic, that's not actually the case now.